Hi everyone, it's Rufman and today we're going to have a look at the X58A OC from Gigabyte. It's a main board for, especially for 1366 AGA sockets and uh, the Core i7 9, uh, 900 series. So let's have a look at what's in, uh, in that box when you open it. So actually we can, the uh, first thing we see about this motherboard is uh, about the color scheme. It's orange and black. And actually we can see there is a lot of uh, different space uh, around the socket, there's like um, special features for overclockers for the OC touch. We're gonna have a look at that after, and we can also see about the uh, the coolers. So first of all, let's see about the coolers. This one is pretty huge. I mean, the, the body is still pretty heavy, but actually we have uh, all that coolers to cool down the uh, X58 uh, CP, uh, chipset. And although we have the uh, source bridge right here, but actually it's different from, from, this, from this board is uh, about the socket space. The socket space is much more bigger. We have a lot of areas here that we can uh, easily, easily uh, insulate when we have uh, uh, extreme overclocking action. So actually we can look uh, around the circuit that we have a lot of different space and we can basically use um, any type of insulation we want. So this is for the uh, for the circuit space. Let's have a look at the uh, OC touch panel. The OC touch panel is something special we can now have on uh, the Gigabyte motherboard. But in the past we only have the uh, CMOS, reset and power button. But right now we have the power button, we have the 4G button. This button we just press it and we boot up with all the uh, the i7 that goes on this motherboard we can boot up at 4 gigahertz directly so it's pretty easy for people that don't really know all and everything about the the, the overclocking or that just want to go 4 gigahertz uh, when they press the, when they start the computer second stuff is about the uh, plus and minus sign here we have two bunch of them the first one is for the ratio for the cpu ratio for the coefficient uh, the multiplier and the second one is for the uh, base clock you can actually increase from 1 megahertz or 0.3 megahertz you just have to press gears here and you have 1 megahertz or you have 0.3 megahertz it's uh, the gap and uh, the step we have when we need to, to increase uh, our um, frequencies. Uh, we can also have a look about the, um, the different voltage regulation we can have. We can di directly plug our multimeters and check uh, a, few different, um, a few different voltage like the V-Cores, the VDIM, the DDR voltage, the memory and stuff like that. So actually all these buttons are pretty easy for power and switch off, reset, and we also have the uh, debug LED that indicate us if we have uh, any problem about, I mean, our overclocking when we are under LN2 or when we have very high end and very uh, high frequency, we can see directly which is the, uh, the, error, is the error code we can, uh, we, we're gonna get. So actually we have all these kind of features in, uh, in this area. It's basically for direct touch and it's called the OC touch and we can directly see if there is, uh, we have directly input on uh, the frequencies we have on, on our CPU. So um, let's also have a look at this these two buttons. We have the clear CMOS right here and uh, close to the CPU socket and we have a little switch called SW1. This one is used to switch for the frequencies about the PWM uh, for, for the power for the CPU. So actually we can switch from 400 to 600 to 800 and 1000 K uh, for the frequencies of about our PWM. So this is in conjunction for the BIOS with the SW4 right on the, on the bottom of the board. Actually, we can switch between the main BIOS or the backup BIOS. So actually, this is pretty easily for all the overclockers that want to have a backup BIOS and the new BIOS for testing or just one extreme BIOSes for LN2 overclocking and stuff like that and just one normal for air cooling and water cooling and normal overclockings. So uh, all that features we have uh, a lot of LEDs, uh, LEDs, LED on the, on the board. So actually we can see which, uh, which one of the BIOS we are running by uh, LED. So if it's a main BIOS we have the LED up and if it's on a backup BIOS we have the LED uh, on the, the backup uh, BIOS that, uh, that lights up. So actually it's pretty um, it, it looks pretty great and about the performances it's quite okay. So um, when you boot up the, this motherboard you're gonna have a lot of different function. But let's get back for the insulation first. We can see here that we have different, we have four PCI Express lane. This allows us to run um, three SLI and quad crossfire. 
but actually the most important thing about that is the space we have here we don't have any capacitors we don't have any um, things that can get into it so actually it's pretty easy to insulate so I know that some of the extreme overclockers um, like to insulate completely the ball when they, they run the VGA under an N2 also because it gets pretty cold so actually it's pretty it's it's easier to insulate here so we don't have any special um, problem for, for, for that. So um, uh, another point of view about the, the coolers and the insulation is we have the, the space around the socket but if we look at the coolers design we also have a pretty like a square design so actually it's pretty it's it's much more easier to insulate around the uh, the back plate we're gonna see that after we, go, we can pretty much uh, insulate here around the, uh, the the coolers and close to the uh, in out panel but we can also um, from all the outside of these coolers we don't really need to always remove it and plug it back actually uh, I tried this one on an Allen 2 in, uh, in, um, in an event in Montreal so it actually was pretty easy to, to insulate and just to get in run for like 30 minutes insulation process and then go for, uh, for Allen 2 so um, after this and last, last time about the coolers is about this one if you look at this and you look at the pictures on the screen, you can actually see that it looks like a flag, the OC flag, the overclocking flag. So first of all, I, I didn't saw that first when I when I opened the box, but once some uh, some of my friends told me, "Hey, look, it looks like a flag." Oh yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So um, about this area, another interesting thing is about the um, the C uh, SATA connectors they have on board. So actually, you might think, mm, yeah, SATA for plugging our hard drive is fine. But why do you need power for SATA? It's pretty easy. It's because with this kind of ports, you plug we uh, we can feed the uh, the extra power in the PCI PCI Express slot. So basically, on the uh, IN mainboard from other manufacturers, you have a Molex or a six pin uh, plug directly on the motherboard, right? I mean, right on the top of the PCI or close to the close to them. So, actually, the design of this board may make the uh, SATA power connectors to fill up the uh, PCI Express lane. So, it's much more easier when you run, I mean, EV, EV um, GPU benchmark, and we have a lot of uh, VGA. Um, another important thing about these two connectors is that it's way, way, way better to insulate. So actually, we, we, we're going to talk a lot about insulation in, in these videos because basically this board is made by overclockers for overclockers. So this is one of the main points. I mean, when you go sub-zero, you need to insulate. No choice. So actually, if you insulate all the motherboard, you can go with crazy LN2 with like four cards and, and stuff like that without the, the, the fear about going to have uh, condensation problems and get some, uh, some water inside of your, of your power, uh, power circuits. So actually for installation it's pretty great and also for the uh, power, uh, power drawing from the, uh, from the VGA it helps a lot. So um, this is about the, the main board basically, but actually we have a few more features and, uh, and features and spe specification about this board. Actually, it's about the back plate. If you, if you can see here at the uh, in and out panel, we can see that there is PS2 connection. This is because uh, most of overclockers don't like to overclock with a USB keyboard. But we have also uh, one network and two a USB port, we have audio and we have also two USB 3.0 port, 3 ports. The USB 3.0 is, um, is used by uh, Etron Tech uh, USB 3 controllers and actually it's not the NEC one, it's, uh, it's one that is performing a bit, much, a bit much better, we can see that in the, in the testing. If you look at the naked board you can see there is no top capacitors, there's only surface mounted capacitors. So actually it's also one of the big points. If we go back here we can see there's only capacitors that is pretty low profile. So this is this have two main interests. These kind of capacitors are more expensive but they are also more performing and they take less space and they are less subject to cold. So actually it's a win-win for us as we can better insulate them, we can have better performances and we can also have um, a more resistance to heat 
and, and cold, obviously, for us. So we have different, we have a lot of different um, fan connectors also on that board. We have uh, one for the CPU right here, we have one here, we have two here, one here for the VGA, and we have two in the, in the bottom of the board. The color scheme of this, this board is like, as you can see, orange and green, and orange and black. And actually, when you are in the dark and you light up, you boot up your motherboard, it's orange and dark, but it's orange with light. So actually, we, we have uh, right here and right here, we have LEDs behind these, uh, these coolers that light up in, uh, in orange. So actually, it's pretty funny touch for, for that one. A little word about the PWM design. Actually, you have all the, the DR MOS, MOSFET right under this, uh, these big coolers, and all of them are plugged with two 8-pin uh, ATX, uh, ATX uh, cable, so it's it's really easy to to fill up a, a huge CPU and huge overclock CPU. So actually, when we open that box, we can find the um, few different things. We have two pairs of uh, SATA 2 cables. We have the uh, in-out backplate panel. Actually, it's not that big because we don't have that much in and out as overclocker request. We have the three SLI bridge, we have a SLI bridge, and we have the crossfire bridge. Among with that, we have the manual. N never forget to read it. We have the driver CDs, some stickers, and also an installation manual that many, most of us wouldn't need. So actually, this bundle is pretty, is pretty tight, and it's also uh, a features request by overclockers to not have a lot of bundles and a lot of features about the uh, with that board to keep the cost low. So actually, this board is made by overclockers for overclockers with features for overclockers that overclockers use and request for years now. And one last thing I want to show you is about this kind of small features. Actually, you can fit them directly in the uh, in the voltage regulation, and you can just plug your multimeters inside. And something very interesting is you don't have only one or two; you have seven of them. So you can you can monitor up to seven different voltage at the same time directly with the board and with the the small attachment you have on it. I think we are all done with this main board. Um, I encourage you to come on overclockingtv.com and watch all about our reviews and also the other videos we have because we have this video, we have this one in French and we have also a few different interviews with the uh, Gigabyte people and how this board uh, happened to be one of the overclockers dream and we're gonna see how it performs in, uh, in our test results. Thanks.